Okay, we're here at Sun and Fun 2018, uh, and here we're with Jan Eggenfellner and his uh, brand new uh, Stoll CH750 Super Duty with the brand new uh, Viking engine on it. And uh, Jan, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Okay, uh, this is the uh, first 750 Super Duty built by uh, a company or an individual outside of the factory in Mexico, Missouri. And uh, when when did you start this airplane? Oh, this this is pretty much a, a 80 day project for someone that's built one before. It, it's absolutely nothing to it. Uh, pre drilled skins, clean coat together. Uh, we ended up uh, painting the fuselage and the wings, and then just powder coat everything else. Super easy to do. Uh, almost fell together. Now, of course, we installed our own uh, 180 horse turbo Honda Civic engine in it, so that is uh, a part of that 80 days probably can be done faster. But in any case, not a hard build. Uh, what we've got is the Super Duty, which has a little bit more uh, wing area than the standard 750. Uh, a little more uh, allocation for engine weight so you can put a bigger engine, hence the uh, third seat in the back of the airplane. <laughs> Uh, we've got a nice interior from Germany. Uh, he's actually generous enough to, to donate it in order to uh, showcase his interior. Um, we've got uh, nice uh, big tires that uh, we love. You can go with any size tires you want. Uh, Zenit supplies the wheels and uh, uh, you know have a standard size tires you can use. You can also then, of course, if you absolutely want to, like we did, go with the bigger wheels. Um, Kind of a 750 standard in the sense that um, you are uh, familiar with the, the, the flapper on, uh, the flying tail. We've got the uh, the bigger tail on this one in order to carry the bigger engine and the bigger and the third seat. 1,900 pound gross weight. Um, we did a um, couple of. Uh, Changes to just minor little details. We've got a little vents here for the rear seat. Um, uh, Zenit has now come up with real nice uh, line for the windows. Everything, everything blends in now. This window into this one into the door into the front it makes it really aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, you did a really nice job on this airplane. It looks really good. Now you've got what is this? A flat black paint finish on yeah, it? Yeah, name is uh, Dead Rat Flat Black. Dead Rat Flat yeah, Black. Say that and, ten times in a row. What about, what about the red? The red is uh, is a powder coat. Oh yeah. yeah. Build yeah. all your pieces ahead of time, and then just bring it to someone who has a big enough oven, and uh, wow, and they'll do it all at one time. That's yeah. pretty cool. A little bit more money than paint, but also very durable. Up front, we've got the Duke five-blade propeller on the 180-horse Viking uh, Civic slash Accord engine, 2018 Honda Accord engine. Uh, we're working on a, a new fork for the nose wheel because we, again, we wanted a little bit bigger tire just just because of personal preference. Um, we've got the uh, original Zenith cowling on the aircraft. It's not being shown today, but. Uh, it actually incorporates the radiator into the cowling, just as uh, the exit air for the air-cooled engine. That's right, and that's the Zenith like homing towel, the one we were using on the IO375 engine. The same that's towel, exactly right? it. Yeah. You, you don't have to change the look if you want to go with air-cooled or liquid-cooled engine. You can keep the same look if you'd like. Right, and that's worked out pretty well. You Works think? perfect, yeah. yeah. Air in, air out. I mean, it's the same principle as with an air-cooled right. engine. So tell me a little bit about your engine. Well, the the engine is uh, is something that, of course, uh, Viking or, and myself we believe in because it's uh, it is a mass-produced engine. Auto conversion has been a traditionally kind of uh, something that aviation has been struggled to incorporate ever since the the Wright brothers uh, flew their airplane and did use an auto engine and, and liquid cooling kind of has been going in and out in favor. Uh, in the war, of course, there was a lot of liquid-cooled engines, and but now we're back to um, car engines which have matured to the point where they have direct injection, uh, liquid cooling, and they can produce an engine that's small enough in size and powerful enough to propel one of these airplanes. Um, it's it's still an alternative to an air-cooled engine, but it's actually quite a a solid choice because you end up with something that's been engineered by Honda and then has all the features that the car engine has. It doesn't really have a lot of modifications by a company right. like Viking. You just kind of install it and then you run it the same way as you do in the car. 
Because that's a, one of the first things you look at this, it looks like a car engine. It I mean, looks like it, a it, car engine, it you, still is a car engine. It still is a it car engine, a car and that's engine. how you can maintain low prices as well, because you're not modifying a lot on it, yep, is that right? Yeah, exactly. Of course, the advantage with this one is that you got the, the built-on turbocharger, not an add-on turbocharger like in the, some instances, but it's from Honda. It's uh, basically the same setup that you would have if you went to buy a 2018 or 2019 Honda right. Accord at the dealership. Right, yeah. with this engine, the turbo is not an add-on, it's part of the engine. Which is important because right. as we know, people that know engines, uh, turbocharged engines have slightly lower compression, they have sodium-filled exhaust valves, all the little details that actually makes the turbo engine last, you know. And then of course with the direct injection into the cylinder, you're not going to have issues such, as, such like uh, detonation or being able to destroy the engine from the wrong fuel or any. That's all taken care of by the engine and the direct injection. So that's important. Absolutely. Now, as a, as a, if you're a, a builder of a Xena CH750 Super Duty, or, or even the, the standard Stoll 750, right. how do you go about getting one of these engines? Well, what you would do is you'd, you'd select this engine for the Super Duty only, and then you go with 130 horsepower non-turbocharged for the other Zenith models like the 650, right. the nice 750. Um, but you would you would basically contact Alyssa at Viking Aircraft Engines, talk to her, get yourself a customized quote that would be for your airplane. Um, you know, and then uh, she would help you get the right engine and the right firewall forward package for the Zenit airplane with the engine mount and the propeller that you need and so forth. And, so and, yeah. and then what all do you supply? So you supply, like you're saying, the engine mount, cowl, right, right. what about prop spinner, things like that? Yeah, and of course that's a, a standard package and then you can, you can go up from there. Like any product that you would buy for aircraft, there's a standard package. If you want a nice fancy five-bladed carbon fiber spinner and propeller, it's going to be additional. But that's why it's important to work with uh, Alyssa at VikingAircraftEngines.com or call her at 386-566-2616 so that she can help you put it together the way you want your airplane to be. All right, fantastic. Thank you, Jan. Yep, you're welcome. So we're sitting now inside the, the brand new Super Duty designed by Zenit. Uh, what we've got is a standard Super Duty configuration. Of course, you can go with the traditional panel, but uh, if you want to fly around your farm or you want to have fun locally or even go on long trips, but you you're, want to use your iPad or any kind of a screen like that, um, you know that you're going to be going VFR. Of course, a lot of these aviation or avionics companies want to talk you into having something that you can fly in an airliner, but you don't have to do that. Uh, we've got it set up nice and roomy in here. We can clip our iPad up here. We can we can clip our cell phone up here. Uh, we've got lots of room for our legs. Um, we have tremendous visibility all around, which is what this plane is partially for. We got our switches nice and handy down here. Our avionics are right here. Um, very handy. We got a couple of gauges up here. Um, it just makes it nice. It's a little different, a little unconventional, but certainly the way a sport airplane uh, could materialize for you to be able to have that extra, f the feeling of room that you get right. in something like this. And, and tell me a little bit about that. Compared to a lot of other airplanes that you've flown, how, how is it? How is that extra room? How this stuff well, it's, it's wonderful. You know, it's all the way from like um, uh, the practical aspect of maintaining your brake pedals. I mean, they're right here. You don't. Uh, you know, getting up underneath an instrument panel and working on avionics, laying upside down, unless of course you configure your panel for that, uh, you don't have any of that here. But more importantly, every day jumping in your plane and going out there and having fun and giving somebody a ride, uh, you get the wow factor of like, wow, yeah. this, this is so cool, I can see everywhere. I see straight down if I want, I can, I can I, right here on the corners, on the, uh, yeah. on the eyebrows here. And, uh, and of course, just, just the, even though physically you might not have more room for your pedals and, and your feet, it, just, it really gives you that feeling that right, you right. have that room. And that's really yeah. what the wow factor is in this airplane. It's mm -hmm. the visibility around you. It's not what's on the panel. It's, right. it's the, the, the windows, the visibility, right. isn't it? And even if you went with this kind of a design, uh, you know, 
you don't have to go without an EFA screen. You can still put an EFA screen here. You can you can put something in between the tubes here. You can have both. Right. It's just right. that you don't have the panel hugging your knees and taking away all that uh, the comfort of, right. of, of and, your legs. And yeah. then you've got extra visibility from that, right? In addition. Yeah. 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 You can be as creative as you want, or you can just go with the standard the brackets that come with the, the airplane from Zenit, and then just put your you know what we did is we we separated it. Um, Zenith sent us a bracket tree that you would then mount a screen on and you can use that as one screen or you can separate them because they're very sturdy and you can put a screen over here and you can put one over here. And know? so what's the intent with that then is going to be what what are you going to put on the, on well, the mount for, there? Uh, specifically in this airplane because we're, we're going to go on a, on a long trip coming up here. We're going to use an iPad with the uh, Stratus uh, box over here for our ADSB and weather and so forth and so on. Um, and we're going to put a little uh, autopilot uh, pull on our, uh, our uh, ailerons in the elevator so that we, for this long trip that will be, and we need steering for that so we're going to put a 496 uh, GPS handheld on this other one. So between the GPS uh, 496 and the, our phones will be our backup and this iPad screen. Um, and autopilot, we're going to be very comfortable going long distances anywhere we want. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then the seats themselves are fully adjustable, aren't they? They are. I mean, they, they slide back and forth. Uh, it makes it easier to get in and out. Yeah. Uh, makes it easy to adjust for your, for your uh, you know, getting the right amount of braking if you need that. Uh, you know, it's, it's a very comfortable airplane. And uh -huh. even in the back, the third seat, you know, to have somebody ride around with you. Uh, it's easy to get back there and it's a nice wide seat so I think all around this is a winner um, for someone that wants a fun plane um, there's no there's not really any compromises in this plane if you want something that jumps off the ground and wants to land in the grass land on the beach land in the riverbeds land on regular runways I mean right. it's just a fun airplane now this airplane we did uh, do the basics you know you, we're talking about having an iPad and all that it's nice to just have your airspeed and your altimeter and a, and, a, and a ball somewhere in the airplane. We happen to mount it here. Uh, we're actually considering moving it to in between the tubes here, make a little pod here. For me, this is perfect. I can still see everything. For someone that's a little bit taller, this might be uh, obtrusive. Right. So, you know, you, you have the flexibility to do whatever you want. But the idea is if you put just an airspeed uh, and an altimeter and a, and a slip indicator, uh, in addition to your compass and you know we use a boat compass this is an experimental airplane we found a really nice yeah. uh, uh, compass that's for a boat but it's nice and big uh, it does have the adjustments on it when you can set it up for aviation use so it can be very accurate you can do so many things with an experimental airplane uh, or you can just go buy the plans, but you have the opportunity to do anything you want. Right, and that's really, the, at the end of the day, that's the beauty of building an amateur build experimental kit airplane, isn't it? You can exactly. really do what you want with yep. it. Install the engine that you want, install the panel that you want. Exactly, and, and, and it, uh, goes down to the, it goes down to the little things like just putting on, you know, riveting on little little uh, things on your rudder pedals and the little skids here. Right. You know, you can you can think up anything you want. Of course, you want to stay light. That's a, that's obviously a yeah. Thing. That doesn't look light, but it sure looks sturdy, doesn't it? Yeah, no, it, it, it it's it's actually lighter than it looks because you, you can buy that out of <laughs> right, aluminum. Right, right. You know, that's you can right. get the real heavy duty stuff for the truck, or you can get the thin stuff for your airplane. Right. But yeah, so you know, we got creature comfort. We want creature yeah. comforts, and we have it. We have nice seats, nice interior, a little bit of heat. Lots of visibility. And yeah, you know, with all the cabin space that we have in here, I can envision that a lot of these airplanes are going to be individualized. Like, I mean, you're going to see a lot of variation from builder to builder, don't you think? I think so. And even, you know, even playing around with something as simple as a console. I mean, you could do all kinds of things with your console. You could have cup holders. You could, you could have se several steps. You, I mean, a console. You know, those are the things that are not aerodynamic. Uh, right, structural right. to the plane and you can work on that and do whatever yeah. you want put your switches yeah. anywhere you want and I always encourage builders to do that because you know you're gonna be inside the airplane all the time when you're flying it so so create an interior that is comfortable for you absolutely yeah. and at the same time you don't have to I mean a console it comes with a with a kit but you, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna do whatever you want to make it uh, your airplane exactly